Hey, this is Empower Coach Ed. And we're, we're talking about leadership, right? How to develop that. Well, one of the first things you want to develop as a leader is your ability to not kill a conversation. Think about the people you enjoy talking to most. They make everyone feel better, a little smarter, a little calmer. Now think about the ones you enjoy talking to these. It feels like a chore. The entire time, you just want it to end. And afterward, you may want to feel like you want to get a drink. A good conversationalist is a good listener. They're responsive. The best conversations have a few things in common. A mix of funny stories, factoids, anecdotes, observations, questions. Or if they're serious, they show sincerity and respect. That's pretty much it. A good conversation is simple and it's actually not hard with a little bit of practice. But you don't have to light everyone's mind up with a new banjo. You don't have to be a conversation chief. In fact, trying to is what normally kills the conversation. Mainly, you just have to avoid irritating people. Like great conversations, the worst ones have a handful of things in common. Usually, it's someone using conversation as a another end. Number one, trying too hard to get something out of it. The worst thing that you can do in a conversation is push an agenda. People know when you're talking to them just to get something. Stop. Don't ask for anything. Even if you're talking to someone you want something from, don't ask. Wait for them to offer. If you have to ask, do it later. Number two, try to BS everyone. Some want to be entrepreneurs. Call this a skill. It's not. The second you pretend to know more than you do, people can tell. They're usually just super light call out on it or they just write you off. How do you fix it? Get comfortable with asking questions and saying, I'm not sure. Faking expertise lose way more respect than taking on the role of a novice. Besides, that's how you become an expert in the first place. Three, making it all about you. A selfish talker will always use anything you say as a jumping off point into their own conversation or stories. They'll ask the most random question like, have you ever been to Egypt? Or, have you read Infinite Jest? Because they have and they want to tell you about it. They also offer way too much information and name drop like crazy. Anyone who does this only wants a spotlight. Here's how to fix it. Don't walk into a conversation. The goal of telling your favorite stories or sharing your most precious knowledge. Let a conversation Oh, yeah. Let other people talk and tell their stories. Responses will pop up into your head. If you remember a story or some piece of information at the moment, that's the thing you should share. It should come spontaneously. Number four, the dreaded humble brand. Everyone feels tempted to share the story news or just promote themselves. We're all good at something. We've all done exciting things. Most of us get engaged, married, 
not the moment. The problem is when you get so focused on your good news, you assume nobody else has ever done anything meaningful in their lives. You assume up front they won't be happy for you. That's when you immediately try to downplay it big news you just share. Trying to be humble usually comes off as arrogant, condescending, as not fix it. You have good news. Spit it out. Humble bragging doesn't work because it's false modesty and therefore a form of yes. Number five, kissing invisible booty. The person you're sucking up to isn't even there, but you're talking about them in the third person, like they're in his mom. There literally is no point here except you're so delusional you think this person is omnipotent, or you're so paranoid you think they bug the room. Most of us have probably crossed this line at some point. That's how you fix it. If you feel compelled to praise someone, try keeping it under one sentence, be specific, and use understatements. Number six, dancing around the point. Everything you say should have a goal, and not just a selfish one. You should be trying to inform, entertain, or persuade. We all hate it when someone tells long stories with a bunch of random detail that doesn't matter. Or treat random trivia and gossip like some kind of groundbreaking truth or revelation. That's how you fix that. Remember that advice writers, speakers, authors, coaches, show, don't, tell. Well, the opposite applies to conversation. Keep the antidote short. If you're worried about offending someone, just don't say what's in your head. Say anything else. Number seven, ignoring all body language. At least half of conversations happen through facial expressions and other cues. Misreading or ignoring a cue could mean you're tr you trap someone who's trying to politely excuse themselves. That's how you fix that. Learn how to pick up on subtle cues, buy a book on body language and facial expression or find it here on YouTube. If someone looks uncomfortable, give them an easy way out or excuse yourself. Number eight, refusing to ever pause. This is one of the easiest mistakes to make. You get carried away with yourself and don't let up. One idea bleeds into the next. Before you know it, the person standing in front of you has turned to still. Here's how you fix it. Actually, pause. Take a breath every now and then again, or every now and then, and by all means, go back to number seven body language. If someone opens their mouth and you've been talking a lot, then wrap up your story and let them interject something. Practice asking more questions. Actually, wait for the answer. Stop trying hard to fill all the gaps. Number nine, working out super obvious. We all know that one guy who can't seem to stop talking 
instead of coming up with new topics though, he'll fixate on something like the temperature. He'll even turn political debates into the simplest black and white issues, something you really can't discuss. You find yourself saying things to them like, yeah, Really? It's nuts, Bob. How to fix it. You can't think of anything to say. Then just stay quiet and listen. Trying too hard is what kills the conversation. State the super obvious to yourself inside your head. Wait for something with a little bit more depth. Get comfortable with silence. Number 10. Fourthing advice on someone. When someone's venting, they usually don't want advice. There's a good chance they've already tried what you're about to suggest anyway. It's even worse when someone pretend to know every detail about your situation or trivialize it by saying something like, all we have to do is how to fix it. Just listen and prompt them for more details. If you have a suggestion, then preface it by saying, have you tried X? Wait for them to actually ask for advice and say something like, I just don't know what to do. If you really want to help someone having a rough time, then offer to talk to them more about it later. Be modest. Say something like, I've been through something similar and I'd be happy to tell you it worked for me. That last part is Crucial. It's what works for you. You see, conversation isn't that hard. All you have to do for a good conversation is show up and let go. Ask simple questions, such as their weekend plans, their hobbies, books or articles that they've read, places that they've been, and perhaps old jobs. What's their favorite drink? It's not the first question you ask. It's the follow-ups. The five W's. What, when, where, why. Get the other person to expand and elaborate. Why is it their favorite drink? When they did first try it. Then, you tell them your favorite drink. Before you know it, you'll learn a lot about someone in just an hour. More than you can possible. The problem is that we walk into conversations with grand plans and expectations. We want to promote ourselves and look smart. A conversation isn't a dance off, it's a waltz. Some conversation better than others. Sometimes they just die. But if you avoid 10 flaws, at least you won't be one who actually killed it. Remember, like, subscribe, and most certainly share this with those conversational killers Absent life. Let me save.